if you could pay rent, you could pay a mortgage because most of the time the rent is higher, higher. than the mortgage. Oh, yeah. The problem that stops people from buying a home is the down payment. So it's and like the knowledge and all that, but it's like the down payment. So it's like if you're living in the Bronx, you might be paying $1,900 a month for a one bedroom in a, in a not a great neighborhood. Yep. You could, you can, you can go a buy mortgage. a property in that same it's neighborhood. Like, man, what's stopping you? $50,000, yep. $60,000 yep. down payment. So that's what stops a lot of people from ever buying a home, and they just stay on the on the yeah. rent path. Yeah, the fees that rent. Common to this is something that people don't fully understand. Rent's not cheap. My graduates from my school, being Forbes, bag drop, bag drop, <laughs> a mic drop, bag drop, bag drop. All right, guys, welcome back. EYL, we back, back in the lab. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be one of those episodes that people love from us from the beginning. You know, it's uh, great. We've been all around the world. We've been talking to billionaires and, you know, having high level conversations, stuff like that. But the most useful information has always been the practical day to day stuff that the everyday person can go out tomorrow and execute in their real life, whether it's how to open how to open a brokerage account to, to buy stocks, mm -hmm. how to start a 529 plan to save money for your kid, how to, you know, get a mobile home, how to get a vending machine, all of those type of uh trucking niche niche episodes have always done well. So we talk about real estate so much. We talk about real estate a lot. Um but this is a topic that we really haven't talked about in depth. So there's NACA program, N A C A. Yep. NACA. Nonprofit Community Ad Advocacy and Home Ownership Organization. For those not in the know, NACA is a program that allows first time home buyers yep. to get a home. And uh, there's a, a lot of benefits as far as uh, the down payment. There is no down payment, right? There is. That, that's one of the benefits. Yep. There's a variety of different <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's some of the benefits? So we got uh, no down payment. Credit score can be as low as 620. Uh, closing costs? None. None. Uh, you get the lowest interest rate in the country regardless of your credit score with right. the option to buy it down lower. I mean, those benefits right there. So it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, yeah this, this, this is one of those information on us application will be on so, your So NAC is a program that allows you to buy a home the lowest cost possible. Let's just say that. And... Uh, we're traveling around and we always meet great people so we met dre i'm not sure when we met we met a while ago so we met in atlanta the first time that was the first time i met y'all at mg uh kiana rants and gems episode uh, yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. i got in the room with y'all we did a clubhouse before together okay um and then i met y'all again um when y'all came to chicago and me and you got to uh spend some time on the boat and, yeah. a little bit and shit. Well, that, that was, was that was the cool. boat on the river yeah, 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 yeah. that was a nice night Pulled up to the steakhouse. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the boat. Chicago. Yeah, Real Chicago. Way. Hey, don't, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. get Chicago twisted. I know I all love stuff y'all hear about Chicago, but yeah, we kicked it like real players when y'all came in. That was fire. That was, that was definitely a moment. <laughs> Shout out to Chicago. We coming back to Chicago for Market Mondays. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that. I saw y'all on the world tour. It's going to be one of them ones. It's going to yeah. be one of them ones. <laughs> Very intentionally chose Chicago as one of the cities. Yeah, go. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, we met Dre. So, Dre has become the online leader when it comes to speaking about NACA from firsthand experience. And this is why I like to interview people like this as well, because it's one thing to have somebody from the program speak about it, but it's always beneficial from somebody that actually just went through the program themselves mm -hmm. and had success. So he actually went through the program, had success with the program, and now he's an advocate for the program. And, you know, he teaches people and provides information about best practices on how you can utilize the program mm -hmm. so you can become a homeowner. Yeah. So yeah, first hand experience. It's yeah. not like something somebody like, you know, teaching out of a textbook. It's like the real life, this is what I did, this is the mistakes that I made, this is things that I did that, you know, you should learn about. And um it's something that, you know, a lot of people have been able to to gain help from. Yeah. It's one of those things and like if you've been in in the real estate space, a lot of loan officers don't know as much information as the people who are actually going through it. Yeah. So in order to, you know, understand it, going through the trials is part of it. So exactly. like I'm sure that you're educating 
loan officers and people and loan brokers. Loan officers, agents, yeah. brokers, everybody. Because it's a, man, the program is so little known. And I felt like a program like this would just be known across the nation just like by everybody. But NACA's also a non-for-profit, so they don't do any marketing. Mm. That's why they have a clause in their uh, program that once you go through the program, you know what I mean, you kind of got to advocate for the program because they don't have marketing dollars. So you have to go out and tell people about the program. And at this point, I've become like their biggest <laughs> ambassador. Say, you're doing yeah, your due yeah, diligence. Yeah, way, way more than my due diligence. <laughs> yeah. So first and foremost, thank you for joining us, brother. Appreciate man, it. I appreciate y'all for having me on. Y'all know this is an honor. I tell people all the time, like, man, these brothers interview billionaires on a regular, and I'm just a South Side kid from Chicago to projects, and here I am. Man, look at God. <laughs> Praise him. <laughs> yes. Yes. EYL. He's worthy of all Focused. things. <laughs> yes. So, all right. So let's get into this. Where does this all start? You from Chicago? Yeah. Right. Used to play basketball. So no, I didn't play basketball. You but just hung around a lot yeah, of basketball. But my players. friends did. So I'm from the South Side of Chicago, the Ida B. Wells Projects. Um, I didn't grow up with any financial literacy, man. EBT, Section Eight, government assisted everything. Um, in the late '80s and early '90s. My projects, just like probably a lot of everybody's projects, were hit extremely hard by the drug epidemic. My mom and dad were affected by that. I ended up being adopted into my own family by my aunt. Thank God I didn't have to go through the system or any of that kind of stuff. So I moved out to the suburb called Maywood. And there I went to a high school called Proviso East High School. And Proviso East is essentially a basketball factory. Michael Finley, Doc Rivers, Steve Hunter, Shannon Brown, uh, D Brown, Sterling Brown. It's just like an unlimited amount of NBA players that come out of this school. Um, just even now, we still got a bunch of players in the league. And me moving out there, I went to this school and I used to rap. And, you know, sports and rap go hand in hand. And I was just like, you know, this dude went around the school battling everybody, beating everybody in rap battles and all that. And, of course, the star basketball players, it's like, yo, what's good, bro? We love what you're doing or whatever. So we would link up, you know, I pick up games and all that. But I realized I wasn't nowhere near as good as these guys. Like, they like, you know, like they got Coach K and Tom Izzo coming to sit in the stands to watch them. Like, mind you, D went to University of Illinois and Shannon went to Michigan State. Yeah. Bill Self and Tom Izzo, two of the greatest college coaches ever. You know what I'm saying? So these these were like people that were coming to my school and like I got exposure early. Mind you, D and Shannon were both all Americans too. Yeah. So like we would hang out with people like LeBron James before LeBron was LeBron. Like we'd be playing Madden and Shannon Crib and stuff like that. So I got exposure really, really early to a lot of dope stuff. Even though my mindset wasn't quite there, God started showing me a lot really, really early. Like, yo, like I'm putting you in these rooms and around these specific people for specific reasons. And I need you to know, regardless of what your circumstances are or where you're from, you one of them dudes. And I didn't realize that for a very, very long time. And those relationships kind of cultivated that mindset for me, man. So at what point do you um, get into real estate? Or want, what point do you even have the aspiration to buy a home? Because like you, a lot of times people come from an environment where buying a home is not even something that's even a, a goal for them. Wasn't a goal at all. So initially, like I said, I was chasing rap. Like I was trying to do music. So one of my other homies, Coastline on the Beat, he's a producer. He sold over 40 million records worldwide. Yeah, Coastline on the Beat. Rihanna yeah. Birthday Cake, As Big Sean, uh, Anaconda, Nicki Minaj, Justin Bieber. He's done so many records. A lot right? of ass songs. And he was, and he, <laughs> and he, was my, and he was my producer. And I'm meeting with labels. I'm opening up shows for Fat Joe, Young Jock, when he popping, you know what I'm saying? Sitting next to Jay-Z and Beyonce at the final four games and when i tell y'all this shit would not break for me like nobody would sign me like it just would not happen for whatever the reason so after a while i realized bro like your life is a facade like you're not who you say you are you're not this image you're putting out there you're doing music videos you're hanging out with millionaires which is cool but you dead ass broke though mm. like you got eviction notices on your door you have children that you're not taking care of all of these things so i had to really have a like you know sit down with myself and just be like all right like you got to do something different so i stepped away from music and i went and got me a job at a telemarketing company bro like just like the worst of the worst like, i'm calling people <laughs> like putting them in schools like devry university like everest like you know what i'm saying like i'm really selling this shit though like mind you like i'm like 
I'm in the office killing like top salesman, everything, whole time. I'm knowing I'm just ruining people's lives. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's a job, it's pays. You what, know what what, I mean? What's I'm, that what's that experience like though, right? Like so, so like I'm I'm as I, you're saying the I'm story. Just finna, I'm just gonna go, oh, go into yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go into this. So yeah, yeah. mind you, I go from here yeah. and my and two, look, it was a time where I was I was like, I mean Kobe Bryant, Shannon played for the Lakers won back to back championships with Kobe. That's a fact. Mary Monica. Like I'm a part of all of this kind of shit. That's a fact. Yeah. And I go from here to here. Like and I'm just in this cubicle, like, <laughs> no, no chains, no. Like, bro, like, <laughs> like, what is happening in my life right now? Mind you, like, I'm around people that are just getting out of jail, like, you know what I'm saying? Women that got, you know, three, four kids, like, people like that I grew up around, Section 8, EBT, and I don't judge any of this, but this is just not the mindset that I had into trying to get sucked back into this environment after, like, coming out of this environment. It's like, what is going on in my life right now? Mm -hmm. So, I had to, like, really just, like, you know, come down, get off my high horse, and be like, God, what are you trying to do for me? Um, and it was just, he trying to teach me a lesson, like, bro, like, you're not doing what I called you to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all of this is cool, it sound cool, but this ain't for you. And, um, once I realized that, I Googled, I started Googling, how do regular nine to fivers get rich? This is my first Google search, because I'm just like, I can't give up on my dream of getting wealthy, because I felt like sports and entertainment were it for me, coming from the hood, that's all we know, that's all we exposed to, right? And I'm seeing my friends make it. I'm seeing my homie make it in music. I'm like, yo, I, this, this is my move. But it's just like, no, nah, this ain't for you, right? And I kept on coming across real estate and the stock market on my Google searches. I came across the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was on sale on Amazon, like $4.99. Like, let me just, it ain't going to hurt me. Let me just buy this book. The book came the next day. When I tell y'all, I, I sat in my cubicle. I was so locked in because this book just started feeding me so much valuable information that I needed. And I'm like, yo, this is what I'm missing this whole time. Like a light bulb went off in my head. Like assets over liabilities, you know what I mean? <laughs> Taking ownership of your own, not letting nobody boss you around, like not answering nobody. Just, all of these things. I'm like, yo, this whole time I've been waiting on other people to do for me when I need to be trying to do for myself. These relationships have crippled me. Because I'm looking for my homies to put me in position. I'm looking for my homies to invest in me. I'm looking for my homies to speak for me. And even though they did, that just wasn't in God's plans, which is why it didn't work out. Like you can have the most biggest and the best speaking and vouching for you. If it's not in God's plans, it won't ever work. You can, there are times where you can do absolutely everything right and it still won't work out for you. And what do you do then? And that was my situation because I did everything right. I was, man, going to radio, like, you know what I'm saying, paying DJs, doing everything that you could possibly do to be successful in the music industry, man, going to the studio, mixing and mastering my records, like, you know what I mean, really putting time, energy, and money into this, and it just never worked out. And um, that book just kind of like, just, just like a mind explosion just went off like, yo, this is it. So immediately, I started saving all of my checks. Um, after that book, I read uh, Money, Master the Game by Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins uh, yeah, yeah. Ian speak on that book highly, heavily. I do too, because it, like I say, that really got my mind right as far as money. Rich Dad, Poor Dad got my mindset right, but Money, Master the Game, oh, it was just like, all right, man, Vanguard this, put your money over here, do this, save you know, these many baskets, and it was just like, what? So immediately, man, started doing 401k because they match. Start saving all my bread, stop buying mics, start eating noodles every day like bro like i really just locked in and just like sacrifice stop going outside all the time job offering overtime to people who are hitting a bonus i was the top producer in the job i started working 50 60 hours a week after about a year i realized bro you got like 10 grand saved up you go buy your house so i called um a mentee my mentor of mine a uh, big sister kyoko i met her through shannon relationships you always speak about relationships rashad and my relationships that i have through my friends who played in the NBA have been extremely valuable. You know what I'm saying? I call her, she's a broker. I'm like, hey, Key, I'm ready to buy a house. She like, yeah, that sound cool or whatever, but you really need to consider getting you a multi-unit. You know what I mean? Because in your situation, you don't want to end up stuck having to pay a mortgage and then you stuck at that job that you really don't like. You use that as a stepping stone to go get you a multi-unit to qualify for your multi-unit and you go through this program called NACA, Neighborhood Assistance Corporations of America. They got no money down, no closing costs, no agent or attorney fees. Dre, you off the lowest interest rate in the country with the option to buy it down lower. All of these different things. And I'm like, you lying. She's like, no, I'm not. What, have I ever lied to you? I'm like, no, you haven't. And uh, from there, I went and did what she said. And 
Just no life, life, man. <laughs> and so, then you, now you're the spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so, so let's start at the beginning with NACA. So I at first been introduced to NACA when my sister was actually going through the program um, with her late husband at the time. And there was like a seminar that they had to go through. Yeah. And I was learning. I had never heard about the program before that. Um, the, they didn't actually go all the way through with the program, which I find a lot of people don't. The they retention don't. is... Yeah. So... A lot of people have criticized NACA because they're like, it's a lot that you got to go through. It's very strenuous. Da, da, da. So what's the first step in the NACA process? Like you said, going to that meeting, it's about three or four hours. And away. that's all over the country, right? Yeah. And they pretty much break down everything, all of the benefits of the program, the things that you have to do, the rules for the program, things you can't do to the program. Um, and yeah, from there, you know, you sign up and let them know what date you want to meet with a mortgage counselor. It could be up to two years out. It could be up to two weeks out. But you put whatever date when you're comfortable. I tell people all the time, don't go until you're ready. You know what I'm saying? Don't go until you're, like, all the way ready. Don't go just trying to see what they're going to say and all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just want to go test the program. Like, no. Go when you're ready. When you know you have your documentation in order, you got your two years work history in order, you got your two years tax history in order, your bank statements in order. Like, these are things that all lenders require not just NACA so it's like you shouldn't be going to a lender any unless you have right. this stuff in order anyway but NACA is just extra strict about their documentation because essentially you're going to these people asking them for hundreds of thousands of dollars for absolutely nothing your credit ain't shit you ain't really shit like you know what I'm saying <laughs> like like most of the time Check. like for real for real Check. whole time like yeah. but these people are still willing to give you a chance most lenders when you go to them in that situation what they doing they're closing the door in your face and giving you a decline letter NACA they're going to give you a checklist of things to do and tell you to come back when you have those things done your ID with them is still going to be intact your file with them is still going to be intact you still going to be able to update documents and send stuff in but they're just not going to qualify you for a loan until you get yeah. things marked off that checklist so it's it's a pretty strenuous checklist so it's not it's standard well from what, that's what I'm saying like people most people with the common misconception is like yo I've seen people say yo I tried twice and I I just can't get through it what is it is it the fact that they don't have don't have that profile that you just spoke about intact or like what? What is the so, thing that is blocking people so from continuing? So with me, a lot of times it was my own fault. I was getting in my own way. Like so, just my mentality. You know what I mean? So I'm, you know, pointing the finger at them. Like a lot of times they'll be like, "Man, send us this document," or "Can you resend this?" And I would get mad and frustrated and want to go back and forth instead of just sending the document. Like you know what I mean? So what if you got to send it twice? Like it just stuff get lost, stuff get caught up in. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And things like that. And then too, a lot of times people get really frustrated because. What they don't understand is NACA is extremely understaffed. They're a non-for-profit. They're understaffed and they're overworked. And then you got a person like me out here screaming from the mountaintops on a, on EYL <laughs> where there's millions of people following. Hey, y'all, y'all can go get y'all a multi-unit with the NACA program. So now there's this rush of people going to the NACA program and now they're even more overworked and more overwhelmed. So it's like there has to be a level of patience and understanding when you're taking advantage of a program like this and just really getting like, all right, cool. I know if I exercise patience at the end of all of this, there won't be anything better out there for me. So I made a a reel the other day that said I compare NACA to Tom Brady and Jordan. They're not the biggest. They're not the strongest. They're not the fastest, but they the best in the clutch. When it comes to the closing table, when you look at those numbers, they're going to deliver every single time in the championship. Like you won't find anybody better. You won't find just you won't find better numbers ever. And it's the same thing, like I say, with Brady and Jordan. No, they're not the most anything, but they just the best. And they deliver in the clutch when it's time to. So the steps is all right, so you, you gotta go to the seminar. Yep. That's like an all day thing. Three, four hours, yeah. And they what do, what do they teach you on the seminar? They don't teach you anything. They just tell you about the program, you mm -hmm. know, like the benefits of the program. Like I say, the rules and different things like that. NACA doesn't teach you real estate. So, mm -hmm. like, if you don't know real estate, you probably sure, need sure. to go learn real estate and then go through the program. Because I tell people this all the time, no matter what program you're going through, if you're going to buy property, have some knowledge. Because if you don't, you're at that point leaving your agent your attorney whoever to kind of like hijack your deal and lead you wherever it is you want to go as opposed to you quarterback in your own deal so have some knowledge and some information on this stuff so when you go in you can kind of tell your agent hey look i'm looking for a multi-unit property undervalued that has people living in it already cash flowing you can tell the lender hey look i'm qualifying i'm going to apply for a multi-unit property so don't just qualify
qualify me based on my income. I'll let you know how much the income the building is generating. You know what I'm saying? Like you work with these people and yeah. tell them what it is that you're looking for so they can put the play together for you. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't know anything and you're just depending on these people to do the work for you, you're not going to get anything done because that's not their job. So that that's one of the things, right? So you have to have do your due diligence before you that's go in. Anything. And and you have to have your profile ready before yep. you go. Well, I, no. want, I want to just ask what, what the profile. So, yeah. all right. So you you go through the seminar two hours. Mm -hmm. Then you meet with a counselor. Mm -hmm. And that's like an hour. And that's and not you know, the counselor meeting depends on, you know, how much of your stuff you got together or not. So when you meet with your counselor, that's when the thorough, you know what I mean, due diligence start with them. Background check, you know, bank statement check, man, give us your two years tech history. Give us your two years, you know what I mean, work history. Right. You know, just like give us your like history of like you know where you've lived for the past 10 years like things like that that they ask you and um some people can get frustrated with it because a lot of times we tend to have the mindset of man i don't want nobody in my business but it's like bro like i said you're going to borrow hundreds of thousands of dollars from these people like it's the bank you need to have a relationship with the bank naca is funded by bank of america so it's no different than going to bank of america Citibank, whoever to go and get a loan there are going to be certain things that are required and if you doing anything fraud or scammy or anything like that, of course you don't want nobody in your business. But if you legit, man, get these people what they asking for because they're essentially about to change your life. Now, that person that you meet, let's say you've done those first two steps and you now you sit with that person. Does that person stay with you through the process yeah. or you pass on to another person? Your mortgage counselor is with you throughout the whole process. That's who you work with. And if there's a time where you know you and your mortgage counselor are not getting along, they may not be responsive enough, you can request to change your mortgage counselor. Like You have all of those different options to pretty much like I say, quarterback your own deal, which is what I did. And like I told y'all, it's not the easiest process because there are going to be times where they may not get back to you. They may not call back. Like, bro, I was pulling up to the office. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's up? Like, I sent y'all my documents. I did everything that I'm supposed to do. Like, now what's the next steps? And, you know, they would go review the file. Like, you know what, Mr. Haynes, you're right. I'm sorry. Let me go in and, you know what I mean, push you through or whatever the case may be. But if you're not proactive yeah. in your own situation, nobody's going to do it for you. And I think most times people are used to, or I don't know what they're used to, because you can't be used to anything if you've never bought a property. So you don't even know the mortgage mm -hmm. process right. so for you to complain about somebody not reaching out to you or following up with you that's not necessarily your job it's your job to follow up it's your job to send in documentation it's your job to go to the office like with anything that's what i learned like man i have to be the person that's kind of like you know controlling a quarterback in my own situation otherwise people it's not important to other and people. also it's like like you said you don't even know if you haven't been through the process and even on a higher level. So we, we're building the homes and you know, these are million dollar houses and we had to go through a bunch of red tape and send stuff. And then the stuff they asked for the stuff that we just sent. Yeah. And it's like, it's a headache and it's a hassle. And it's like, you know, it's not the most efficient buying a home is not the most efficient process period i love that you just said that because people don't people think it's just knacker oh no like, no, 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 no like no. everybody gonna ask you to double send yeah. documents and all. it's not this is the mortgage process this is the home that. buying process and y'all don't y'all ain't never bought shit, so you don't know so you just complaining <laughs> about true. what you think you yeah. should be getting yeah. just entitlement be beating y'all ass all the whole time yeah. let's just call it what it is entitlement <laughs> yeah. be beating the shit that's out what, what we say like, like, is 1000 right that's the first part of even getting the home but now we like you said we building so now we're dealing with permits yeah and that's a whole nother process and now you got to go through inspections and inspector exactly. might not approve certain stuff it's like man all whole, this is a thing. time and a patience thing and again no, even in sports you're when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands millions of dollars these things take time these things take time and most times when you hear like i say about somebody getting offered like a big contract you hear about them turning the contract down or just not working out or the deal going bad like this is business this is just how business works like i said there are times when you can do everything right and stuff just still won't go your way like it just and then what do you do like you have to get back on the grind you got to get back to it you can't let it discourage you and a lot of times people get emotional about these things that's why you hear so much slander because mm -hmm. like now you mad oh naka did this to you naka did that to no you just quit <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? you quit the process yeah. essentially because if you would have stayed down you would have came up because that's what i did yeah. like like and that's what my ex did and that's what my you know what i mean friends did like that's what like i've helped so many people through this program who listen but it's this it's a mindset thing you know what i'm saying and most people don't have a mindset in order like i say it's entitlement you feel like you owe something it's like nah man you got to go earn everything that you need that you got out here yeah. from property to to business to customers like you have to go and earn these things you have to go and show and prove you have to like 
do what you need to do in order to make things happen. And most people operate in a space of instant gratification. And I think the internet has a lot to do with that because you see people doing so well and you see people accomplishing things and you see more of the celebratory moments online. You don't see the hard behind the scenes grind that it took. You don't see the offers that I put in and you know what I mean got turned down or got beat out by cash offers you didn't see the time where I almost lost ten thousand dollars in earnest money because you know what I mean the 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 contractors didn't do what they were supposed to do and give me the proper estimates just like it's a lot of things behind the scenes that people just don't know and practicing patience and understanding how this process goes will make your life and just your process way easier when it comes to stuff and like just a lot less stressful yeah, we, because it's like it's not easy it's a super stressful process regardless of whether it's NACA, fha conventional it's a it's a process man and i don't think people understand they gotta that. be ready for the long run you, you said when when you spoke to your friend who recommended NACA to you that you had ten thousand dollars yeah and so a lot of times when people hear NACA yeah. and they hear no down payment they think oh you need no money yeah that's not true. that's like that's like one of these misconceptions yeah. like oh it's no money down my credit can be 620 but you need you need money to Absolutely. be in the program. I mean, can, any, can you, can you talk about any that? any any mortgage that you go and get, you're going to have things you have to pay for taxes, insurance, like all of those kind of things. In addition to that, NACA wants you to have a specific amount of money saved up. Me, I personally try to tell people save about three and a half percent of the loan amount that you're looking for because that covers your taxes, insurance, and it should cover. You know what I mean? The um, the cushion of a few months that they require you to have as well because what they don't want to happen is for you to be house rich and cash poor mm -hmm. because a lot of times what tends to happen to people is they'll you know pay their down payment fees all of those different things you done came out of twenty twenty five thousand dollars or whatever the case might you've just spent 30 years of your life saving this money now you just gave it away now you have this house and when something goes wrong with this house a roof issue a plumbing issue and you don't you can't fix it you don't have the money to fix it and they don't want you to do that. So they set you up to where you have money. They set you up to where if you go get a multi-unit, you got cash flow coming in because they make sure the numbers fall right. All of those different things. And this is why I love them because they protected me throughout the whole process. There were times where contractors tried to do foo-foo shit or just different stuff. And that could just like rent interference on all that. Like, nah, we're not going for that. Yeah. It times like somebody try to sell you a four unit building, but the building is only zoned for three units and the garden unit or the basement unit will be like illegal. But NACA will, you know, they gonna go do their due diligence and you know what I mean? Like check, you know, city records and all that, make sure all of this stuff is zoned and approved correctly. And a lot of times like it don't and they protect you from all that yeah. stuff. man. Even in, in your own personal, right? Like I was reading that they, they'll check your patterns, right? Yeah. They'll check your rent patterns, yep. they'll check your savings patterns. So it's not like, hey, they'll look at how much you were paying how much you make and they'll yep. say well that's money could be saved so having that as an important like system makes sense right because it's like you don't want to make sure like you don't want to have it where i save 500 then i save nothing for three months yeah. and i put three thousand yeah. they're watching that they history watching all of the to make sure that it can yeah, making you. sure you got good good money spend like good money habits like and this is like and this it's not bad like you should want to have good right. money habits you should appreciate this kind of training like okay i need this because i've been not disciplined for the longest amount of time and now i have somebody challenging me to do better why wouldn't you want that yeah. so they approve you for you come with your information da, 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 they put it in the system and they say okay you're based off of what we think you you can get a $200,000 mortgage on it. If you're going for a single family home, yes, but that's not how it works with multi-units. Okay. With multi-units, how it works is, even with NACA, so they have limits. So with a single family home, we're just, these are examples. It depends on what area you're in, they'll give you a max. So let's say a single family home, they might give you a max of 200,000. Two unit, they might give you a max of 350. Three unit, they might give you a max of 600. On a four unit, they'll give you a max of like 900, 950 or something like that. So for me, I'm like, why not max out and go crazy if I'm trying to go get me a rental property? I'm going to get four units. The four units are going to make sure I have a place to live for free. It's going to make sure my mortgage is paid on top of still having some money at the end of the month is cash flow. So I'm going to do that. On top of that, it's going to allow me to go for a bigger mortgage, which is going to put me in a nicer neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Um, in addition to that, if I go find a four unit in a nice neighborhood, that means the rents are going to be high. You know what I mean? Because that's just what it is. When you live in nice neighborhoods, you got higher rents and the apartments are nice. So how NACA qualifies you or lenders qualify you in general for multi-units is totally different than they do for single family homes. A single family home, you're qualified strictly using your income. When it comes to multi-families, 
And this is why I tell people, go find you a multifamily that has people living in it already, because what they do is they'll take 75 percent of the income that the property is generating already, add it to yours. And that is what makes the property more than affordable. For example, this is what I like to tell people. So let's say you make two thousand dollars a month at your job. Right. And the mortgage on this property you're looking at is three thousand dollars. Of course, you can't afford it. You're a thousand dollars short. But let's say the property that you're looking at also generates four thousand dollars a month in rent. They'll take three thousand dollars of that, add it to your two thousand. Now that's five thousand. Subtract three thousand from that. Now you have two thousand dollars left over at the end of the month, which makes this property way more than affordable. On top of they only use seventy five percent of the rent. There's still twenty five percent that's still there. Mm. You get what I'm saying yeah. to you? So like that's that's how the multi-unit math works and people don't understand that. And they're like, I can't afford a multi-unit. It's so expensive. How did he afford a multi-unit only making $26,000 a year? Because I understand how multi-unit math works. And I went and found me property that had high rents and cash flowing already. And all I had to do was pretty much sign the paperwork and move in. So you found the property yourself, then apply for the program, right? So does it, when you apply for it, does it have to be primary residence how yeah. does that work yeah so you do have to live in the property um for the life of the loan but NACA has a five-year lien on the property um because they're not designed to you know create investors they're designed to balance our neighborhood so mm -hmm. they want you to live in the property and for the first five years you have a 25k lien on it every year drops off five thousand dollars so after the fifth year you probably like clean and free to go do whatever you need to do whether it be refinance or whatever the case may be and um at this point my first one i've been in it for eight years the second one has been five years so now i'm kind of like free and clear to knack lien and i can kind of go move around how i want to um but it's just like i'm set up to the point where now i can pull equity out of my properties naka set me up to the point in the beginning on my first deal we ain't even talk about this yet but my first deal was immaculate um i got a four unit property i moved in so i live for free all three units you know what i mean were uh paying rent already i didn't put any money down i walked away from the closing table with a five thousand dollar check that same day I got paid from my job in addition to I kept all of my money because I was going through the process and they required me to keep saving so that 10,000 turned into 15,000 so I went from making about $26,000 a year at my job to having $26,000 in cash in my account after my first deal which allowed me to go start investing in the stock market you know what I mean doing more deals traveling networking building business meeting guys like y'all and that just came from that first deal and this is why I try to encourage people to go through NACA because they set you up so beautifully after the deal it's like damn I still got all this money left the average person they out of what 10 15 20 thousand dollars on the deal with FHA you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. it's not that with NACA yeah, I had to spend, actually, I didn't spend nothing, but you may have to spend a little money, like I said, your taxes, insurance, and little stuff like that, but, man, it's nowhere near the same as with a conventional FHA loan. So, let me ask you this. Okay, a few things. You was making $26,000 a year when you first got a house? After taxes, yeah. Okay, so, NACA, all right, so, some people's gonna say, like, what's the catch here, right? Because it's like, okay, you can make whatever, you your credit score, you don't have to have good credit, there's but you do so you don't have to have good credit but your dti has to be good your debt to income has to be good and you can't have like collections you know you can't like no t-mobile okay. bill and that kind of stuff so they like look at your they look at your credit profile yep. not necessarily not your score. score exactly okay okay that's good to know and there's no money down no money down right so how are you preventing people from putting themselves in situations where they just going to set themselves up for failure you teach that's, them no, I'm saying NACA. Like how? Like that's why they're structuring. Like you have to have this amount yeah, saved. That's so they so they like, make sure they make sure you got that that cushion saved. So when you start off, you got a nice chunk of money to handle whatever it is mm -hmm. that you need to handle any issues that may come up, etc. They also require you to take a landlord class before you go and buy a multi-unit too, so you can understand like the rules that's and the of, regulations. That's part of the yeah, absolutely. They make you go take that class so you can understand the rules, the laws, and the regulations of your particular area and stuff yeah. like that. So you're not doing nothing illegal, like you know discrimination, just any of that kind of stuff. So when when you're trying to do the saving right so like what he said if you got the twenty six thousand and they're seeing your saving pattern they're seeing your rep pattern let's say that you're late on rent one month you cooked you cook so now you gotta if you were headed toward the front of the line now you're going you're to the back over. of the line so, over. so how long is that everything. that's the pro how long is the process are you looking over a six month span nine month span a year so they look at your rent payments over a year um you know they're gonna get that information from your landlord or whatever right. the case may be or whatever you if you live with your parents they'll get that from them um but yeah man they do it for about a year 
and they go back and check that information. So you, so, all right. You bring the property to NACA. No. So when I went to NACA, I had a, it's, a, it's the same process with everybody else. I went and got me an agent. We went out. I got approved. An agent through NACA. NACA. No, I use an agent outside. It's a regular NACA. real estate yeah, agent. Yes, but NACA does have agents who like kind of like know their process, so it's a little bit faster when you have one of their agents. Mm -hmm. But I just had my agent, you know, register through the NACA and learn whatever their process was because, again, their staff is overworked. Like I said, you got a lot of people going through the program, so I didn't necessarily want to go with an agent who I wouldn't be a priority with. You know what I'm saying? So I went and found my own agent who made me a priority, and we made it happen. Your own agent through the NACA program? No, or just, somebody just, I found, but that had knowledge of the NACA yeah. program. Okay, so, yeah. so then you bring, so NACA approves you for the, the mortgage, mm -hmm. and then you, you bring the property to them. Yeah. yeah. Is there ever, I, I've heard people in the past say like, some sellers, they don't want to sell to NACA people? Mm -hmm. So I think that's I think that's all about communication. My, every time my agent went in, he would let people know like, hey, look, uh, my guy's going through a program called a NACA program. They got this, 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 and this. This is this. He's a first time home buyer. It's great for them. And NACA also has um, some benefits for the seller as well. They pay like the um, the seller's title fees. Like it's a couple of things that's beneficial for the seller too to make the seller want to like possibly like you know what I mean jump at that. And then too. Like you just gotta have a you know a agent that know how to work and finesse deals. Like my agent, he used the emotion card and everything. He's like, listen, uh, my guy, he's from this neighborhood. He has kids. They love the area. They want to still go to the schools. Mm -hmm. All of that. So like when you have somebody who like been owning their property for a long time and they care about it, they don't want to just sell it to an investor who's gonna come tear it down. They actually want somebody. So you gotta have like people on your team who are savvy and witty and know how to like you know communication. What I mean? communicate. Well, I'm glad you said that because that's something that not just in real estate but any part of business. There's still an element like I know AI is taking over everything, but there's still an element of human interaction. Absolutely. So I know could turn into a yes if explained correctly if you bring somebody lunch this is just this is part of any type of business right both it's of like, my deals worked out like that on the first one it was the emotion car on the second one it was because we were black it was a puerto rican guy in a puerto rican neighborhood he said too many white people was coming in trying to lowball him he was a developer he knew his area he knew what was going on but he ain't looked like a rich guy though so they would try to play with him Man, we came in. He was like, I will give y'all whatever y'all need to close this deal. He gave us $40,000 in closing credits. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like really looked out for us because representation mattered to him. He was like, they're already gentrifying this neighborhood. It went from a Puerto Rican neighborhood to now it's mainly white. And now I got two brown young people trying to move in. Hell yeah, let's do the deal. You know what I mean? A lot of times certain things can play in your favor. Again, like it's, it's all God's timing, man. Yeah. Like, and for me, I knew that NACA was the best thing for me in my particular situation. I'm like, where else am I going to be able to go and take advantage of properties in these amazing neighborhoods with these low low cost to entry numbers like you know what i'm saying like it just it was just a no-brainer for me man and yeah. again it changed my life you said at the, at the end of the closing you got money back and yeah. i've heard stories of people yeah. when they use NACA, they get money back can you break down how that works because i know there's no closing cost yeah. fee for you so how do you get money so back? so what happened was again a, an excellent agent worked out a 15 dollar i mean a fifteen thousand dollar um closing credit 10 grand was used to buy my interest rate down five grand just ended up up in the air where would it go to the buyer it's his money they gave it to him you know what i mean naca don't allow you to walk away with cash no more so what they would probably do now is apply it to the principal mm -hmm. as opposed to buying the interest down but in that particular deal it worked out for me so i walked away with the five thousand dollar check security deposits like i just had a, a a bag of cash that i just had never seen before all at one time after that first deal <laughs> and um it allowed me like i said after that I had been reading Money Master the Game, all that. I yeah. went and took most of the money, put it in Vanguard, index funds, all of that kind of stuff. I went and bought me a Jag and took a vacation. You got the Jag? Yeah. I That's tight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, know. definitely would have got me a Jag immediately, immediately thereafter. We, we know. <laughs> so, okay. So, all of that, how long did that take for you to start the program to get your first my first deal was six months man and people, think, and people think it's like it's just a long process so the first deal was six months um from the time i met with my mortgage counselor to the time i closed i met with my mortgage counselor in december because i went to the meeting in october and i just wanted to give myself a couple of months just like i say to kind of like get some things in order before i went and met with a mortgage counselor from october to december i kind of got some things in order credit all that kind of stuff pulled the documents that i needed went and met with him 
he told me everything I needed. And he was the person that gave me the play and told me to bring my uh my girl back. Cause um he's like, Y'all not married or nothing, are y'all? I was like, no. Nah. He was like, look, this the play. I see what you're trying to do. I like your style. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just you a cool guy. And he's like, you seem like you about your money. He's like, so this is what you do. You go get you one, then you bring her back and y'all get another one. That's the vibe. Yeah. I want to talk about that because that's yeah. the vibe and conquer strategy. Julian Gordon has spoke about this. MG the mortgage guy where if you're not married, it's actually beneficial. A lot of times people will be like, all right, well, I'm not buying a home until we get married. Crazy. Which <laughs> <laughs> who would think, Sanity. Who thinks that? <laughs> so but there's actually benefits in place for for buying a home not being married. Absolutely. Because you can buy you each can own a home individually and then you can always buy a home together when you're married. Um so the divide and conquer strategy is something that people have talked about. So explain this. Because another thing that people can say is like, well, I don't want to buy a home with somebody, then we break up. But you actually went through a breakup. Yeah. So you been through it all. Explain <laughs> explain this that the second the second play. Okay, so the second play, again, we took her back or whatever the case. This is your be. girlfriend at the time. Yeah, it's my girl at the time. We took her back. And by me knowing the program, I'm like, yo, I can go big. So I'm looking in Chicago's biggest and best neighborhoods. I know the maximum on four units. I know I can go up to nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars, all this. So I'm like, oh shit, we're going to the north side. Lincoln Park, Bucktown, Wicker Park. These are areas that, you know what I mean, young, you know what I mean, people who are making a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Now these are the areas they moving in. They're not married, but everything within walking distance, buses, trains, like, you know what I mean? It's a, a popping gentrifying area in Chicago. And I'm like, that's where we going. So we go up there and this process takes a year because we just could not get deals like you know what i mean like it just wasn't working out for us but again at the end y'all will understand why i'm not working out because god's timing is the best timing we went through probably four or five different deals where we just got turned down no almost lost ten thousand dollars in earnest money um just like went through the ringer with this second one um but then we finally went to see a property and this property was amazing because it's almost like a two for one y'all call them adus out here we call them coach houses in chicago but this particular property it had a three unit building in the front of the lot and in the back of the lot there's a coach house and this ain't no regular coach house this house has 12 foot coffer ceilings floating stairs um just cherry wood oak floors the guy mm -hmm. who built the property was a developer and he stayed there with his family while collecting rent from the building in the front so essentially this is a two for one and like I said, it's not a small property. I we do peer space in this thing, make a ton of money in it right now with her still living in it. So that deal went like, all right, we went to this guy, walked the property like, yo, the property is amazing. He told us, look, the three units in the front, they all generating between sixteen and eighteen hundred dollars a month. I'm like, yes, I, I knew what numbers I needed. And then um, I told my mortgage counselor about it. He's like, bro, the only way you're going to be able to afford this, he's like, y'all going to need about eighty thousand dollars. And I'm like, he like, you got that? I'm like, not quite. But mind you, I had took like out of the 26,000, I had put like 20 of that into the stock market. And this is right when Trump had got in office. So that 20 had turned into like 2930. You know what I'm saying? And I realized that like, yo, I still got money in the stock market. She had some bread and then the rest we had to get from a seller's, you know what I mean, concession, which again, I told y'all, he was willing to give us whatever we needed because he wanted to sell it to a minority couple as opposed to, you know what I mean, anybody white or an investor. And um, that worked out in our favor. So with that deal, we were able to buy the interest rate down from three and a half percent to 0 0.8%. Your interest which, rate? Yes, which made the mortgage go from $3,900 to $2,700. How did you do that? The inch, how'd you get the interest rate down? A NACA allow you to buy the interest rate down. He gave us forty thousand dollars, and we use some of our own money. So NACA, you go That's buy the interest rate down. Yeah, Wait, well, how low? I mean, zero point. How low can you go? <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'm like, what? So at this point, they don't even let people go that low anymore. Like, I essentially crazy. broke the bank. Like they changed the rules. Like you can't buy your interest rate below one percent anymore. Like it's finito. So, so buy like, interest rate, you just you put a lump sum of money put, up so, front, up front to, yeah. to lower your interest. So rate. essentially, I gave them was about seventy five, eighty thousand dollars to save four hundred thousand dollars in interest on the back end. So mm -hmm. it's like I gave y'all eighty bands to save four hundred and just extra money that I would have been paying. In addition to that, it gave me twelve hundred dollars extra, you know what I mean, savings on the mortgage. 
So that made it way more than affordable because, like I said, we now have a $2,700 mortgage with rents of $5,000. Now, my net worth then jumped up to $1.5 million in real estate through the NACA program. It's built relationships. I have a brand. I have a book. I travel. I do public speaking. Yeah. I'm here talking to the biggest and the best. Also true. All because of that first deal with the NACA program. My relationships have grown to the point where I'm able to learn from other people in my industry because they're attracted to me because of how I did my deals. Like I have investors who are worth 15, 20, 30 million. I go to Bigger Pockets Conference and things like that. They're like a 0.8% interest rate. These are the biggest real estate investors in the world we talking about here that, you know what I'm saying? And they like, how did you get a 0.8? How did you get a two and a half percent? Like no money down. I've never heard of this program. And you would think People know about this is and they NACA, don't. Is NACA just is NACA for anybody or you have to anybody lower income people. So it's 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 designed for lower income people. But you can do NACA as a high income earner too. They'll just consider you what's called a non priority member to where your interest rate will be a little bit higher than the priority members, but it's still gonna be below the national average. And you can't buy in a neighborhood that the median income is higher than your median income. It has to be equal to or less than your median so you income. So you got to buy in a luxury neighborhood. Yeah. So, so that, that, for example, if you make $250,000, you would probably have to buy in a neighborhood where the median income is 100000 150. Me, I was making twenty six. I can go buy in a million dollar neighborhood because their goal is to balance out neighborhoods. NACA doesn't want good or bad neighborhoods. They want it to be all neighborhoods are equal. The median income across all these neighborhoods are the same and that's how you create balance by putting people who make 30000 in this neighborhood and people who make 200000 in this neighborhood and it just kind of like levels everything out. So that way you don't have redlining and things like that. Can the high income earner, can they buy down the interest rate as well? Yes. How how low can we go? I think about 1% at this point. 1%? Yeah. What's some of the mistakes that people make with, with NAC? It, I think the biggest mistake is probably just trying to get a fam single family as opposed to a multifamily. That's one. That's one of the mistakes. That's right? one. Um, and then two, feeling like it's going to be easy because you hear me talk about, yeah, no down payment, no closing costs. Like, yeah, it's your lick, but it's just like, it's still going to be a process. Like, yeah, this, this is going to be your move. This is your blessing right here. And when you hear me talk that, get excited, but know that it's not going to be easy just because you heard all of these benefits in the 30 second clip. Make sure you go do your own due diligence. Make sure you go watch the full interview. When I tell you about how I almost lost $10,000, when I tell you about they may slow drag, when I tell you about they may not pick up the phone, like when I tell you, you may have to pull up to the office, knock some shit off the desk, yell at some people, let them know you serious. Like, don't skip that part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, don't skip that part. Yeah. Is, it, is there uh I guess a database to show you because obviously you know what the NACA office is where mm -hmm. you live but yeah. if I'm living in a different state or if I'm you living online, somewhere go to website, there's a website that finds like where the NACA office is at com. okay yep, so well, all right let's talk about the landlord side of it what did you learn what have you learned as far as being a landlord patience man just understand have you had any problems with tenants one so during the pandemic so the the Puerto Rican guy who sold us the second property right his brother was in the garden unit of the building he was just doing his brother a favor and at the time we couldn't have his brother move because we needed the income to qualify for the property so as bad as i wanted him to move i couldn't put him out you know what i mean um and his brother ended up extending his lease out for a year which guaranteed he stayed there it was a small one bedroom apartment man this dude had a big rottweiler in there just like you know just a, a single junkie guy like no women in his life just like you know it was just all bad and um Smell Man, terrible, terrible, terrible. Know. Cigarettes, no. like, you know, just like gunk all over the stove and fridge. It just, we it was all, just we, bad. Yeah, we all know. It was just bad. And I know, um, I know the guy. I don't know him. <laughs> no, I know him, but I know. I, <laughs> hey, 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 town guy. Sure, of, I, just, yeah. I already know. Yeah, I already so, know about a couple so, of beer cans. Yeah, yeah. and all he cared about is his everywhere. dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Watch like, his bro, wrestling. Bro, bro, you tripping. Yeah. So, he tried to, you know, pull the whole pandemic move where he, all right, it's the pandemic, I ain't got to pay, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> he tried to run the pandemic play on me. <laughs> all right, so Nobody else paying. So listen, so listen, everybody else was, so that's the thing, everybody else paid me throughout the pandemic. I never had an issue. Everybody paid except for him. Mind you, he was a mover. I'm hearing this dude's truck start up every morning and go to work and move people, right? But he acting like he ain't got no money. So I'm like, bro, all right, cool. Like, and then God always look out for me, bro. Like, always. Like, I, I just feel like I'm one of God's favorites. Man, two weeks after he starts trying to pull that shit, 
his apartment start flooding. Mm-hmm. I'm not getting that shit fixed, bro. I'm not getting that shit fixed. And in that frame of the month, man, it rained about seven times. <laughs> <laughs> About seven times. So mind you, he's walking around in poop water, dog hair. His dog is wet. His dog hair is soaking oh. in poop water. It just, man, he ran out of that place. Like when I tell y'all, he ran out of, he, he couldn't get out of there fast enough. So I didn't even have to put him out. I didn't have to evict him. The flood got him out. And I just refused to get it fixed. Because he was just like, man, you going to keep on letting it flood? Are you going to pay me a rent? <laughs> like, like, what are you talking about? Like, it's an even exchange. Yeah. I don't know rent money, no fix. But could he, could he have made, because I know like, these tenants have a lot of laws in place. Like in Chicago, I, they definitely do. Because like in New York, you don't even have to pay rent for like a year, maybe sometimes even longer. And you still, the landlord still has to do whatever you tell them to do. That's crazy. But in like Georgia, it's a landlord friendly state. So you can evict somebody in like seven days. I, got 10 I, days. I wish we could do that in Chicago, but blessed enough, like I haven't had to. And even with him. It just took two weeks for him to go because the rain, like I said, bro, like just imagine waking up in the middle of the night and shit water and pee and just like, and then you, like your dog, like your dog laying in this. Mm. But I, yeah. that's part of it. But on the other hand, when he leaves now. Now I had to clean up. Now you have yeah, to, clean to clean up. up. So yeah, like I had to clean having up. reserves, talk about that, like yeah, having so, the money to repair. So listen, things. listen, that's, that's the bare minimum as far as my reserves, y'all. Like I had a $30,000 plumbing issue that beat my ass. Like, like, so that you, that you, flooding yeah did you know prior to the flood no, or the flood was that, like oh, that flooding shit. is what let me know this is going to cost thirty thousand dollars to fix sure. yeah talk about that so I saw, I saw you talk about that before yeah on rants and gems yeah. so that happened and i'm just like i'm trying to patch this thing up for like a year you know what i'm saying it went on i'm trying to like i had the plumbers coming out he's like all right cool we can do this this is a short job we can do to kind of like fix it but then it kept on happening. And uh, the plumber came out. He's like, bro, I got some bad news for you. He was like, the only way we can do this, we got to dig under the ground. We got to get to the pipe. Not only do we got to dig under the ground, like we have to go get a like a, a excavation machine. Like, yeah. and you like you pay for that. They don't pay for that. Like, yeah. so now you're renting excavation machines. You're renting, you're paying the person to operate the excavation machine. Now they have to dig down 10 feet under the concrete, dirt, all that, get to the pipe. Take the pipe out, replace the pipe, put new dirt, put new concrete, all of these different things. And he's like, yeah, it's going to be about $30,000. Bro, my my heart yeah. fell into my stomach. Like, what? I know that feeling, bro. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, like, like 30 yeah. bands? Like, you talking about the down payment on another property type shit? Like, he like, yeah. So, blessed enough, I'm financially literate. I use credit, business credit, interest-free business credit. Um, You know what I mean? I've Use one of my cards, swipe that, been paying it down with the rent ever since then. I'm still paying on that shit right now. But the thing is, financial literacy. Once that interest free is up, I just transfer the balance to a new card. You know what I'm saying? Interest free. So that way, at least I'm not paying extra money on it. Um, the rents have increased over time. Peer space is running up a bag. So it allows me to still take care of that without it coming out of my own yeah, pocket. It could, it could be a blessing, right? Because yeah. I've had that same similar situation shower i started seeing like the water wasn't going down like what's happening call the plumber they're like yeah Yo, you got a belly in your pipes i said what what is that right and then they put the you know the, 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 the camera machine, the camera, <laughs> yeah, the camera like down. that's the belly and then you look at it and it's like it's literally like yeah, a, a see U, down, yep. and now the water can't get out i said well how much is it going to cost to fix they were like you want the, the rough estimate or the real estimate <laughs> i said give me the real one he said about twenty five thousand. Uh-huh. I was like, what, to fix this? Like now? He's like, yeah, 25000 And if we have to go out to the street, we got to call the town, we're going to have to get permits, it's probably going to be 40000 mm-hmm. And you're sitting there, you got a family. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what do you do? We can't take a shower, we, we can't, can't wash the dishes. Nothing. And for me, it was my tenants. It's like, I can't have people living like this. Like, <laughs> exactly. I, would be, I would be foul as hell to constantly just keep trying to patch this up. Yeah. And my tenants' furniture and rugs and all these things yeah. are getting damaged. And, like, and they're getting pissed. Yeah. Like, dude, when are you going to get this fixed? It's like, you can't keep on trying to patch this up because it keeps happening. But on the other side of it is like, now that, that it's fixed... It adds value. It adds value because you got a whole home. new plumbing line. Exactly. All of these things in plumbing, electrical, roof work, certain things add value to your property. So now I just added brand new plumbing lines to my property, which gave me, you know what I mean, a sweat equity. Where, when did you buy your first home? 2015. How much How much was it at that? $360,000. How much is it now? $590,000. He said it with a smile. And he, I didn't pay should. anything. As you should. And, the, and mind you, 360000 
The mortgage has been paid down for eight years by the tenants. I've been living for free. So that's all. Like Once I sell this thing, it's going to be all profit on top of 20 or 30 years of cash flow. Uh, are you getting positive cash flow now? 1700 a month. 1700 a month. From a place that I live. Yeah. They know you're the landlord? The landlord? Yeah. I'm cool. I, I'm like the coolest landlord. Yeah, yeah. Like my, my oh, you tenants live, love you me. Live, so, oh, yeah. so, so you, okay. okay. Yeah. So, so like if I go do something big or something like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell nobody, but for this kind of stuff and a lot of people be like, yeah, don't tell like, nah, man, get, get familiar with your tenants, get, build a relationship with your tenants. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's a good thing. Like don't, in that way, it's easier for you to have certain conversations without people getting offended or anything. Like, hey, Miss Jones, don't forget, it's the fifth. Make sure you pay your rent tomorrow. I ain't gonna charge you a late fee, but make sure you like, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like you have these relationships and you can like, you know, you watch people, kids grow up and just like all of these different things that I've gotten to learn and see as a landlord, man, it's actually pretty cool to have relationships with my tenants. And I've the main thing for me is, man, you treat people with respect. You provide quality living spaces for people. You don't do slum lord shit. I promise you, your tenants are going to take care of you. Like they're going to take care of you because at the end of the day, this is their home. And it's yours. And it's mine. <laughs> yeah. And with them living here, how many people do you know like to tear up their own shit? It's rare. Of course, you see it sometimes. People live in some pretty fucked up places. But a lot of times in those situations, people don't care because the landlord ain't taking care of the property the way that they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. When you taking care of your stuff, people who have nice stuff, they like to keep it nice. I've never, before I was a landlord, I've never lived somewhere and I just tore the place up or nothing. Like, I like nice shit. So I like to, you know what I mean, take care of it, keep it nice. If I had company, I want my company. Oh, this is nice. Like, yeah, nice. that's just common sense, right? That's a fact. So can you refi out of NACA? Hell yeah, boy. Rashad, I'm sitting on so much <laughs> equity right now, right? So in order for me to go get a home equity line of credit and pull money out of a property that I own, you gotta show income. I gotta show income. And please go show income before you start talking about doing BRRRs and all of this kind of stuff. These terms that's all over the internet because at the end of the day, you have to know the terms of doing these things before you go out and do it because yeah, that's your money, but it ain't your money like it's your money in your pocket. You got to go get permission from the bank to access this money. And if you don't have a relationship with the bank and you can't show the bank that you're making money, the bank ain't going to want to hear that shit at all. Then I'm mm -hmm. like, boy, this our money. <laughs> <laughs> we own this. So talk about the, the pair space play because you you not you live in the, the, the one unit, but the one with your girlfriend, yeah. you are using pair space. Yeah. How you came to contact with it and what's the play on that? So pair space is something that I found out about when I was rapping. I used to, you know, have videographers or whatever and we just always these dope places but it would just be in the budget and what they charge me for and i'm like bro where you find this at or whatever the case may be and i would hear them talk about pure space but i just never looked into it so one day i was shooting some content at the new house like i said it's five so i just i like man it's five i'm gonna shoot all kind of content in this house my guy was like bro you should consider putting this house on pure space you would check a bag mm. and i'm just like that's the shit you've been telling me about all these years he like fam I'm going to rent your house. <laughs> he like I'm finna, he like I'm finna be calling you and renting your house. So the next day, I went on Pure Space. You know, I went and took me some pictures of the property or whatever. Man, two days later, bookings, 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 video shoots, photo shoots. People want to come and host dinner parties. It's just like. Peer space, and, peer space is a is a, a vibe, and a lot, a lot of people still don't know about peer space. And it's crazy because the thing is. You can still live there. It's mm -hmm. not like Airbnb. You have to be gone. And and there's different rules. Like Airbnb, a lot of these buildings, they don't even allow Airbnb. They don't allow it. And stuff like that. And they're cracking down. But like we found out about Air Pair Space when we went to, um, we got the show Revolt. Eyes is over liability. Shout out to Revolt. So when we, we do like offset locations where we film with different stuff. So we, we were in LA and we were filming in LA at this um, house on the hills. And um, actually, was it Atlanta? Atlanta. We were in Atlanta, yeah. LA too, but Atlanta, we was filming an episode and um, the lady who actually owned the house, mm -hmm. she found out that we was filming there. So she stayed because she was big fans of Evil yeah. Elf. Yeah, yeah. So she wanted to introduce herself. So then she started giving us the play. Like, yeah, you know, I rent this out, the Pierce Space. So then we went to LA and then we, they Revolt rented a spot there. So we, we was talking to like the production team and all that and they like, yeah, it's, and the good thing about peer space is that, especially like for that type of thing, it's only for a couple hours yep. as opposed to the whole night. Yep. And it's a lot more money because Bruh. it's like, this is Revolt, NBC, yeah. stuff yeah. like that and, is coming to pay. And you can have 
them come for two hours Somebody nbc come for two, two hours. hours cbs come for two hours yeah. it's not like all right cool we're getting 500 for the night yeah. like nah you can run this shit up and then too the crazy thing is so i ran out my main floor i ran out my office space i ran out my bathroom all separate <laughs> i can have three different things going on at the same time getting three different bags yeah. all from the same so house. space is more so airbnb is for people that want to come and stay the night and, yep. and live there for a day Peer space is for people that want to do production. Yeah. And create or space, like host dinner like parties, rental. meetings, yeah, stuff party, like yeah, that. Yeah, space yeah, music video, yeah. what we're doing we here. Just did, we, like we just, when we did our photo shoot, same thing. Somebody's yeah, residential shoot. home, you got like five hours to do it. Yeah. Take the pictures, put everything back the same way. By the time they come home from work, you just made 500 to to $1,000 just coming on, Man, home on the train. Home. If you live in a city that has like a media presence, like New York, Chicago, Atlanta, LA. There's always stuff happening. Always stuff happening. Always something's happening. Whether it's a a production, a music video, a dinner. Man, something. I've had I've had so many YouTube like sensations come and do stuff in my crib. Like people with two million followers. I'm like, are you doing off of? Like, yeah, what up, fam? Like it just be like, you know, it may just be cool, like the kind of people you interact with and come across. And then too, another thing about peer space. I feel like God put it in my life for me to be, you know, a testimony to a lot of the young guys. I get a lot of Chicago rappers that come there. Mm. So when they see me, they see me look like this. You know what I mean? Sometimes I might spark up a smoke or something or whatever. They be like, you own this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm like, I own the building in the front too. Like, bro, how? <laughs> I'm like, man, this the play. Go through the NACA program. All this money you flashing in this video, <laughs> like, like go many... put that shit in an account. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, build a relationship with a bank. Like, you know what I'm saying? They'll come in the house, they'll see, you know what I mean, the uh, CNBC, the stock market on that. Like, bro, you into this? Like, I, I know I look like y'all. <laughs> yes, but this is my lifestyle. Like, I buy I buy property, I invest in the stock market, I start businesses. I'm like, this is my clothing brand. You have a clothing brand? Yes, bro. Like, I'm really out here, like, going crazy. All because of NACA. Like, a this rich, is, like, like, <laughs> like, like, you feel me? Like, like, like respectfully, humbly. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Whole time, like, yeah, y'all, and you can do the same thing and when i talk to these guys like this when i'm speaking their language and i'm speaking their lingo they like yo i want to be like you like i'm doing this shit That's representation is important. Yeah, they like i'm doing this whole time thinking this is the only way for me to get rich here you are you have thousands of people who follow you on instagram i'm, try I'm trying to do everything that you're doing in a saturated lane but here you are just flourishing in your own lane doing your thing I'm like yeah bro and like you like, said you're not, you're not compromising who you are as a person none of that all your safety and, none of that and it's important and and the thing is so essentially so you brought your first home with no money down no money down it's increased two hundred thousand three hundred thousand three hundred thousand yeah. dollars since you since you purchased it you're getting seventeen hundred dollars positive cash flow yes sir and you're living there yes sir so you're living for free. Yes, sir. And you've increased over the course of time. Equity. What, are you just going to keep this forever? or you... <laughs> With the interest rates? Absolutely. Um, like I say, the, the most I'll do is a home equity line of credit to go and start reinvesting in more stuff. Like I said, I am sitting on a ton of it. But like, why sell a cash flowing asset in a great community? Like this thing is going to, like the neighborhood is going to continue to go up. Like I have... I'm 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from downtown. I have buses and trains that give you access to downtown. I have amazing schools in my neighborhood, parks. I have churches, restaurants, anything, any amenity that a tenant could want. And the kind of amenities that make tenants want to stay for a long period of time. I have those with my properties because I'm intentional about the neighborhoods that I buy in. Like, this is why I tell people you need to have education in real estate. You can't just go and just like just because you got approved for a loan like no like no like be intentional do, be able to do neighborhood analysis understand like, okay where are the good schools where are the people living at who have you know good grocery stores where are the like nice parks at like what what access do i have to buses and trains to where it's even if i am far away from somebody's job and they don't have a car they can just take public transportation these things are important to tenants you can't when you're when you're investing in multifamilies, you can't go and do what's best for you. You have to come from a tenant's perspective. Like, okay, if I was a tenant and I lived here, would I want to live here and how long would I want to live here? So what's what's the what's the I'm sorry, sorry. What are the, the, the loan uh, terms on it? Is it traditional like thirty years? Man, or thirty year fixed rate. Thirty fixed rate. Thirty year fixed rates, bro. So um you know Jamal King, obviously, right? Yes, Jamal, my man. So he used to be a, a cop on the South Side. And he was telling. I remember the first time I was telling, I was talking to him, and he was like, you know, he he stopped being a cop because he realized he can make more of an impact doing real estate. Yep. And he was like, when he was a cop, 
it's a it's a thing where your job is to be reactive whereas all right somebody commits a crime now you arrest them and it's like it's a never-ending cycle yep. right but as a landlord and as a real estate investor you get to be proactive right and now you actually you can help change neighborhoods you can educate people yep. you can change somebody's life so they don't have to even be in a situation where you have Ever. to arrest arrest them so coming from chicago how important is it for you to educate because obviously you know when we hear chicago everybody you always think about drill music and gang violence yeah. and murders and all of that stuff oh block we're not from 63rd oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like just, so, yeah. so so do you yeah. think do you think this is something that you know the education can help can help change um some of you know the issues that are faced i know it can because it helped me like the moment somebody told me about naca the moment i found out about rich dad poor dad the moment i read money master the game mindset shift immediately because now i don't have to fucking go out here and risk my life and do certain shit that i know that i don't really even want to do but i honestly just don't know any better like this is what i know to survive now i have alternative routes because somebody told me about it i've been exposed to them and 90 percent of the issue is exposure we don't have exposure to any of this like i said i was exposed to my friends going to the nba college coaches lebron james like these are the things that made it like believable for me like i saw rich people i saw wealthy people i saw people who were doing things on a large scale i saw my friends come from a small town in maywood and go play for the biggest and the best coaches in the country go win championships with the shannon played with lebron and kobe yeah he got drafted by cleveland and won two championships with kobe like yeah. that's like wasn't he in the all-american game with them too yeah, man was that, like, and, that's the, and that's the crazy thing. Like he 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 was neck and neck with LeBron in the All American game yeah. and the Jordan game as far as points, the dunk contest. Yeah. Like I think he had co MVP of the Jordan game that year. Like that's like this exposure, like what it did for me, man. It's just like it just changed my life because coming from where we come from, like you don't see it, you don't hear it. So to be around it and exposed to it, it's like like this is it. Like, I don't have to settle for this. I don't have to be okay with this. I don't have to be this person. You know what I mean? Like, I have options now. And I feel like the more kids in our communities see this and see people talk about it, like, intentionally, like, aggressively, like, how I talk, like, and I speak to them in their language, mm -hmm. like, you know, what I mean? it's just like, that's life changing for a lot of people because it's like, yo, I don't have to go see your drugs. I don't have to. If I start this at 18, 19 years old, I start, you can go get a NACA property working at McDonald's. As long as you can pay rent, you can pay your mortgage. Now, it may not be in the best neighborhood or whatever, but it's ownership. It starts there. And then you can take that little piece of property or whatever the case may be and scale up from there. But if we don't know about ownership, we don't have any representation, we don't have anybody teaching us these things, we don't have anybody talking about these things, it's just kind of like... You said something that was extremely insightful just now. If you can pay rent, you can pay a mortgage. The, that's true because most of the time the rent is higher, higher. than mortgage. Oh yeah. The problem that stops people from buying a home is the down payment. So it's and like the dollars and all that, but it's like the down payment. So it's like if you're living in the Bronx, you might be paying nineteen hundred dollars a month for a one bedroom in a in a not a great neighborhood. Yep. You could you can you can go buy mortgage. a property in that same it's neighborhood. Like, man, what's stopping you? Fifty thousand yep. dollars, sixty thousand yep. dollars down payment. So that's what stops a lot of people from ever buying a home. And they just stay on the on the, yeah. the rent path. Yeah, the fees that rent. Common to this is something that people don't fully understand. Rent's not cheap at all. Rent at not all. Cheap. Like I, I just told y'all, my rents over here for a one bedroom in Chicago now eighteen hundred, two thousand dollars. Like yeah. in this neighborhood, in my other, in my other, my first property, I'm getting fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred for one and two bedrooms. Like that's a mortgage. But, you know, I know Those people mortgages. where we live right now. I mean, you talking about twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars for a two bedroom. My mortgage is three thousand dollars for my house. And that's what I'm saying. I have a four unit, and my mortgage is three thousand dollars. <laughs> like, exactly. you feel what I'm saying? That's real. Like, that's what? real. On my first one, my mortgage is twenty seven hundred dollars. On the second one, it's thirty five hundred dollars. Once you factor in the taxes and insurance and stuff, but like, bro, like I'm hearing people say they pay this in rent. Like, yeah. Yeah. So not only is my mortgage that, but I don't even pay it. Somebody else pay it. And I got, and I'm getting paid off of that mortgage. So it's like, man, at this point, like we don't got no excuses, y'all. Like yeah. I say, I started at 
$26,000 a year after taxes. Mom and daddy did dope. Like, just all of these different things. Like, ain't no excuses out here, bro. Like, it's none. Like, zero. Like, when, like, when I hear people make excuses, bro, like, that shit burn me up. Because it's like, bro, like, I come from this shit. Like, I didn't watch, like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of foul ass shit, a lot of traumatic stuff in my life. And it's just like, you making excuses, fam? Like, I ain't had my mama or my daddy. Yo, OG raised you. Like, you making excuses? Like, boy, stop playing with me. That's why representation is important, man. So, yeah, shout like, out to you. Shout out to the whole city of Chicago. You got Ross Mack out there. Uh, we got Mobile Mobile Home 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 Elite, out Rashana, there. And Shana, that's, and that's Scott crazy because they're like, we've, like, so myself, Rashana, and Mobile Home Elite have formed a partnership to where it's like we just putting on for the city we have meetups um we've like started a business um we're gonna uh host a mastermind here soon man like we've just really like just decided to just like take initiative and just like you know be the driving force of financial literacy real estate etc in the city because we've grown to the point where our brands are big enough to do it and then if we collaborate on this it's over. It's over. Collaboration and then two, over competition. Like the next meetup, yeah. we, it's us, and then we reach out to Jamal. Jamal gonna show up. It's just like every, we be so divided a lot of times. We don't even realize, man. A lot of stuff just be a phone call away. You know what I'm saying? But it's your the way you think kind of like mess a lot of that up. But yeah. like we like swap all that under the rug. Like and, yeah, we finna and, get to it. And representation is important. And also is documenting the process. Yeah. So I want to talk about landlord life, man. Yeah. Talk so, to us about so, it. So yeah, man. Um, I have a series on YouTube called A Landlord Life. I'm just big on creating content in general. I've been documenting my process since 2015, and it's crazy when I found y'all. I had a series uh called The Renaissance Report, and it was it was I was trying to do what y'all are doing right now, but I spent way too much money on this shit, right? Like I spent like fifteen thousand dollars producing five episodes, right? Like I had skits and I rented out like this big like like acting studio in Chicago and shit. And it was just like ridiculous. Like I had some fire guests on there and everything. But like once I looked at my budget, I'm like, nigga, you can't keep this up. Well, show open, show close. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um like it just it just showed me like people love content. People love that series, people love that show. And then like I just started building content around everything I'm doing, the landlord life. And the landlord life is not a fun series. I make it fun, but man, everything that you're going to see on that series on my YouTube channel is Leaky roofs, plumbing issues, toilets, just, you know what I mean? HVA systems going bad. Like, I'm showing you guys all of everything that I'm dealing with as a landlord. We got three seasons, over 40 episodes. I think the only good episode is me telling people one of my tenants is the owner of a popular shoe boutique in Chicago, so I got a plug on the shoe. <laughs> but outside of that, ain't no real benefits to, like, you know what I'm saying, managing your own properties on a day-to-day. -day, you know what I mean? I want y'all to understand this. Now it's going to be beneficial on the back end, of course, you know what I mean, when you cash out and, you know what I mean, you getting your cash flow. But... Some of this it's stuff real, that you're dealing it's with, it's real. Like it's not, it's Hollywood. not Hollywood. It's not Instagram. It's not, you know what I mean? Pulling up in a Lambo to the front of the property with your Gucci's on. It's like, <laughs> nah, boy, you're going to be fucking around walking in poop water sometimes. Like, it's just going to be that. And like, you know what I mean? You got to understand what you're getting into when you get into it. But at the end of the day, what I always tell people, it's not easy, but it's definitely going to be worth it. And like I said, I haven't worked since 2015. Like, I've just really been out here moving around and networking and building relationships. A long way from the cubicle, bro. So what's, so what's next for you? I know you got the education as well. Talk about everything else you got. Um, so I host a monthly webinar called Navigating NACA, where I pretty much teach the NACA play because, again, NACA can't tell y'all a lot of the stuff that I can tell y'all because they're not allowed to kind of like steer you in a particular direction. I don't work for NACA. I'm not an agent. I'm not any of that. So I can kind of like give you the play however I need to give you the play how I ran the play. Um, so that's been doing extremely well. My Navigate NACA webinar has been helping people like get their mindset right and just like really understand the process and the importance of going through this program. In addition to that, man, I got my merch Mindset Matters. Um, this is a design. Books are the keys that I'm trying to um, get into the schools. Like when they have like book week and like you know different stuff like that um and i own this i got this trademarked and everything so just like just really growing my brand bro i got a book that i've been uh promoting and just traveling What's around speaking book? renaissance's five-step guide on getting your shit together and um that book is pretty much my blueprint and everything that i did to get my mind right before i got started in real estate and financial literacy and all that just you know self-evaluation understanding that i was in my own way you know what i mean um understanding the power of my mind and words knowing that the way that i speak to myself and the words that i put into the universe are extremely important 
it's a really, really dope book. It's a real quick, short read, and I got some dope interviews in there from some of my homies. Um, I think y'all know Rita Newface. She be with Dame Dash a lot. She's yeah, from Chicago. Mm -hmm. I got an interview mm -hmm. with her. So Inter recently. Yeah, interview with my homie Cosign. Um, interview with my homie, my little cousin, DJ Oreo, who's Chance the Rapper's DJ, and like just doing a lot of dope shit. So the book is dope. Like I say, man, just really trying to like scale and grow my brand. Like just following y'all blueprint for real, for real. Just like I, I see all of the stuff that y'all doing, and it's just like I really just like try to mimic it. Like, all right, cool. The merch, you know what I'm saying? Mother's traveling, doing speaking, networking, helping, adding value to people. Cause honestly, like when it comes to this, like y'all are the blueprint for real, for real. Oh, for so sure. it's like I don't try to like go and reinvent the wheel. Yeah. It's just kind of like, no, nah, you see what they do. It's <laughs> just like, just, just, just do what they do. You know what I'm saying? They win it. So it's like, if you see Warren Buffett investing in Apple stock or whatever, it's just like, why would I go and try to figure all of this out when I could just do what Warren Buffett's doing on a smaller scale? That's a fact. That's like, a you know, like, like, Smart man. Like, like, <laughs> like, just, like, so that's what I'm saying. Like People overcomplicate things a lot of times. It's fact. like the richest and the best. I'm going to do whatever they're doing. So when I hear Warren doing something, when I hear motherfucking y'all doing something, when I hear Ian doing doing something when i hear you know what i'm saying bill gates doing something all right cool how can i apply this to whatever it is that i'm doing that's, and that's how you simplify your life all right brother it's been a pleasure man how can they follow you what's your social media man, website all that stuff. at renaissance 125 across all social media platforms my website is www.therenaissanceu.com there you can get merch books you know courses uh everything that is renaissance Troy, housekeeping items? Yeah, shout out to everybody on Patreon.com, all our earners there, everybody in EYL University. Shout out to the entire city of Chicago. Like Shadi said, we will be back in Chicago for Market Mondays Live in October, the date to be announced. Uh, it's going to be a special one. But uh, I just want to shout out the whole city. Every time we go there, there's so much love out there. Uh, and shout out to you for supporting us and our merch and all our endeavors, man. Y'all showed us so much love. Uh, we, we, we can only say thank you but so many times, but we greatly appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Chicago. Get your tickets to Market Mondays Live. It's going to be a vibe. And uh, yeah, man, thank you guys for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. Bag drop.